Welcome back to part two of our Polestar 2 review. In part one, we looked at its specs, exterior, and interior features. If you haven't caught part one yet, be sure to check it out. The link to the video is in the description area below. Now, let's pick up where we left off with a look at the Polestar 2's infotainment system, technology and convenience features, driving experience, and much more. You've got a nice feature, which is the wireless charger right here. Uh, so you can slot your phone in, and uh, if it supports wireless charging, uh, it will engage and then there are two USB-C ports. Yes, those are USB-C ports. Uh, one is designed to connect uh, to the Polestar's infotainment system, uh, the one on the left with, uh, with the white ring here. Um, so if you have uh, an Android or iOS device, you would want to plug in here. And then the secondary one is for uh, USB-C connectivity to charge your phone. Uh, and then you've got some toggles and switches here for your defro defroster, uh, front and rear, as well as your hazard signals. Uh, these are not haptic, nor are they uh, very sort of um, tactile in terms of feel. So you, you do have to really mind yourself when you're pushing these buttons. And then there is a dial control here, an analog dial control, uh, which is nice for controlling the volume as well as play pause. Uh, you've got some assist functions as well in terms of your driver support, uh, adaptive cruise, your lane keeping aid, your driving alert for, for, uh, for drowsiness or not paying attention. And then there's the road sign feature as well, which is really nice. Um, uh, that will really sort of alert you in terms of when the road conditions change. Uh, that can be found in the driver display. So I think that's a really handy feature and then also the collision avoidance as well um, seems to really be quite responsive and actively engages depending on the road conditions and uh, that's uh, the ready to drive notification that uh, alerts you when you um, are ready to begin moving forward uh, and making sure that you understand that the gear that the vehicle is in as well as seat belts and so on uh, you can see your charging um, status with the Polestar 2. There are some settings here where it allows the driver to unlock the cable or schedule the charging and obviously uh, that's ideal for home charging uh, to take advantage of charging the Polestar when power rates are lowest. And then there are some other features that gives you the car status in terms of service. Uh, nothing much to report here, it's all good. You've got uh, the behavior of the car when you lock it. Uh, so whether you want to lock all doors or a single door uh, and then also uh, rear seat reminders to lock the door as well and getting uh, audible feedback when the car is locked. Uh, you can uh, also adjust the interior lighting so uh, the intensity of it whether it's high or low. I've put the mood light intensity on low I felt like it was a little too bright um, but uh, overall, you do have some customization. You cannot customize the lighting color, uh, so it is the standard colors. Uh, there is no personalization in that regard. And then also the exterior lights, how does the, uh, how do the lights sort of behave depending on how you set it up, whether it's corner illumination, uh, active bending lights, which is a pretty unique feature when the car is uh, moving at night, uh, you can see the lights flutter uh, to really sort of match the terrain of the road. Pretty interesting, and I think uh, it is a pretty helpful feature. Uh, very hard to demo that feature, but uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty cool feature from the Polestar. And then also your mirrors and wipers, you do have the ability to tilt your mirrors when you go in reverse, either the driver, passenger, or both. Uh, auto dimming mirrors as well. And wireless phone charger is just off and on. Uh, nothing particularly special here. Uh, and then you've got your app dashboard for uh, Google Maps and YouTube and YouTube is really nice while waiting in the vehicle like I am now to uh, be able to entertain yourself uh, while waiting for, you know, uh, either the vehicle to charge or for, uh, let's say, your guest if you're waiting to pick someone up and pretty responsive overall. And then you do get the option to see the next videos upcoming in YouTube. So it works very much like a tablet right here and that's a... Uh, pretty nice entertainment option that Polestar offers in the two. And then you have Apple CarPlay as well. I don't have my iPhone connected to the Polestar, so I can't show you what that looks like, but if you're familiar with Apple CarPlay, it is the same experience. And then you've got Google Assistant as well, uh, where you can put some commands into Google, and uh, we'll try it right now. Hey Google, can you find the nearest fast food restaurant? And there you go. It launches Google Maps and that's pretty cool and shows you a bunch of fast food restaurants in the area. In terms of the climate control, um, so typically you have sort of this 
sort of base level information about the climate control system where you can configure either the driver side or the passenger side, uh, which is a nice feature. Uh, it's got heated seats as well. Uh, and so obviously for this time of year in Texas, where currently it's 121 degrees with the vehicle stationary, roughly 40 degrees while the car is moving, obviously no need for heated seats. But if you wanted to get into it a little bit more, you can also configure the zones uh, where the uh, ventilation system is going to cool the vehicle. Uh, you can set an eco mode on the climate as well. Uh, and you've got things like the defroster and the rear defroster. That's also here on the console as well. Uh, but you can do that from the info infotainment display and uh, be able to set the uh, climate control to your liking. And then uh, there's the parking. So you can start preheating or cooling the vehicle uh, based on the time that you estimate that you'll be at your location. So that's a nice feature, especially on a hot day right now in Texas, uh, to be able to preheat the vehicle. I'm sorry, to cool the vehicle, uh, certainly cool the vehicle this time of year. So that is a very handy feature. Uh, and then you've got some timer functions as well. And then there are some settings that allow you to um, pre-configure the driver's seat heating, the passenger seat heating, and the auto rear defroster. So those are some nice uh, convenience features with the Polestar 2, uh, depending on your climate, uh, to have the car really comfortable for you when you're ready to use it. Uh, one of the things that's really nice about the Polestar is with Google Maps, um, how well connected it is to the uh, vehicle's uh, sort of management system in terms of the battery management. And so, for example, uh, if you want to put in uh, your destination, it will show you your battery percentage uh, on arrival. And then if you're returning from the destination, it will also show you what it is on, on return. So 63% on arrival, 52% on return and then you get a nice bird's eye view of your route. And so again, very responsive, uh, the 11.2 inch display, and then you can recenter that to see where you are immediately and what your next maneuver will be. One of the other highlights is the Google Maps integration with the Polestar. Uh, so you get two things, you get the actual uh, navigation in the driver's display, and then also here on the infotainment display, it's just so easy to glance over at the infotainment display to get the information that um, you really forget that it's all the same information here in a driver's display. Uh, the interesting thing is the contrast. The driver display has a black background, whereas the Google Maps in the infotainment has a white background. Uh, I, I found myself consistent, consistently looking at the infotainment display, even though all of the information is, is here currently in the driver display. But, um, the other thing too with the infotainment is very cool is that there's just so much information on hand uh, whether that's carplay whether it's google maps and then also even the local radio station to show you what's playing on so it almost feels like um you have kind of a uh you know smartphone type of experience or tablet type of experience with all of the uh the information presented all at once. And so that's pretty cool. Um, and none of it is, is uh, really challenging or, or really annoying to deal with uh, in terms of being, in terms of too much information being presented. So uh, very well done. But again, that goes back to my earlier point is this car is just so well thought out uh, in, in every different detail, which is uh, pretty impressive. Even though I have very high marks for the Polestar 2, um, one key, issue is going to be for taller drivers um there is this raised um uh sort of console area storage area which has the wireless charging which has the usb-c ports uh and then there's a uh pocket storage below which is quite quite shallow but it's good for storing keys or putting your smartphone there when you don't want to charge it but um for taller passengers, uh, your knee will rub up against it and it's quite annoying um, and it actually might become quite painful uh, or at least cause some irritation to the knee because the knee is constantly knocking it. There's no way to comfortably rest the knee. I suppose um, uh, a pad could be put here to, to really sort of soften the feel against the knee. But this is something that uh, Polestar really needs to rethink because um, it's uncomfortable for 
uh, taller drivers. I'm average height at uh, five foot nine or 175 centimeters. And so uh, it's, it's uncomfortable for me and would definitely be problematic uh, if I were a long-term owner of this car. Uh, so, you know, my, my feedback would be to Polestar would be to address this. Uh, but if, if you are interested in the Polestar 2, uh, you'd probably have to put some kind of um, cushioning here uh, against this console to um, make it a soft touch against the knee or soft rest against the knee but um, currently it's against this hard plastic and it's not comfortable especially if you're going to be in the car for an extended amount of time. Another issue with the Polestar 2 is the rearward visibility in this car. Um, so it is a lift back uh, which gives the benefit of uh, additional cargo capacity but the view from the rear window is quite small. If you're trying to see sort of what's on the rear sort of uh, C pillar of the car, uh, you cannot see that. And then the rear seat headrests are quite tall. So it's, it's very difficult to see around the rear quarters of the car. Um, but then also just even uh, getting a view of, of multiple lanes of traffic, it's difficult to see that in this car. Then uh, the reverse camera, it's the same situation. Uh, the reverse camera is mounted low on the bumper and the bumper actually causes a vignette effect uh, or almost a, uh, what's the word, kind of a, a hood uh, shadow effect where uh, it really blocks a lot of the visibility of the rear camera. And I, I just can't understand that on Polestar's part because if you can't see out of the rear window very well, then it would be logical for the rear camera to give you as much visibility as possible, but that's simply not the case with the Polestar 2. The camera issues, it should be something that can be easily corrected, uh, but you know, in this particular model here, the 2024 Polestar 2 dual motor, that's not the case. And um, again, this car has a high rear deck, so Polestar needs to do everything they can to ensure the most visibility uh, out of the vehicle. Now, I do believe that on their uh, Polestar 3 uh, vehicle, uh, or one of their Polestar vehicles, that they will be eliminating the uh, rear sort of uh, window entirely where you'll rely on a camera. Perhaps this is an indication of the direction that they're going, but the execution uh, right now just isn't great. Um, so someone who is not a particularly comfortable driver uh, might, might find that to be a problem uh, with the way this car is set up here. Fortunately, however, uh, the car does have blind spot monitors uh, on both the left and right mirrors. So you do get an indication when there is a, a vehicle in the Polestar 2's blind spots. Uh, so that's a nice addition to have uh, where you don't have to resort to looking over your shoulder or guessing uh, where another passenger vehicle might be in relation to the Polestar 2. Um, so is it a problem? Yes, it's a problem, candidly. But, um, you know, Polestar has, you know, added some enhancements to, to really address that. But I do think that the rear visibility in this car is, is quite poor. One of the neat features about the Polestar 2 is that it does have one pedal driving and uh, there are three modes. Uh, there's obviously uh, off, uh, so there's no one pedal driving, simply relying on the brake. There's the low mode, uh, and then there's the standard mode. When I got the car, I had it in standard mode, uh, but it was quite aggressive, meaning the car would hard stop when you take your, uh, take your foot off the accelerator. Um, in city driving, that's gonna be fantastic. This car will be super efficient uh, when you operate it in standard mode. But for um, uh, mixed usage, uh, different road conditions, I recommend the low mode. Uh, it's still a very um, pronounced one pedal feel. The car will stop itself uh, coming down from a reasonable speed, say uh, 100 kilometers per hour or 60 miles per hour. Uh, in some cases, uh, you do have to be on guard for the brake. Uh, at any speeds above that, especially here in Texas where the roads are quite fast. Overall, uh, the one pedal driving is very nice in this car, uh, but again, uh, quite aggressive under the standard mode. But uh, as I mentioned, in city driving, it's gonna be fantastic. I imagine that will make this car even more efficient than it is. So right now I'm bringing the car to a stop uh, coming down from 
30 miles per hour or 50, 50 kilometers per hour. And I had to get on the brake, but the traffic is uh, sort of picking up uh, or, or sort of stopped abruptly, I should say. So that required that. So we're at the Shell Recharge Station. Uh, have never seen one of these in the US. Uh, so we're gonna give it a try. Uh, so it says fast charging up to 300 kilo kilowatts. Uh, we're gonna see what that looks like in practice. Uh, last night I charged uh, this Polestar 2, uh, got 88 kilowatts. And so um, we're going to pull into a dock that supports 180 kilowatt charging because the other docks are currently occupied by other vehicles. So yeah, let's see what we get in terms of uh, charging results. Correction, the 360 kilowatt bay is open and we're gonna give it a try. Um, this is a 310 kilowatt hour system. Uh, so let's see what the shell recharge system is capable of providing to this car and what the Polestar 2 is capable of accommodating. The Polestar 2 has 130 miles of range on it, battery levels at 46%. Uh, the ETA for completion is uh, 2.36 p.m. It's currently now 2 o'clock p.m. And I'm getting 114 kilowatts uh, into this Polestar 2 from the charging station. We started out at about 150 kilowatts, so that's pretty good. Uh, but obviously, as the battery is topping up, the uh, charging rate has um, has declined uh, quite a bit. But uh, right now, uh, it looks like you know we're we're getting a steady 110 kilowatts. One of the charging stations uh, just over there, uh, another 180 kilowatt output charger uh, only was outputting 70 kilowatts. Uh, but based on the recommendation of another driver, they told me that the charging station that I'm currently connected to uh, outputs much higher. And I'm seeing that right now, uh, as I mentioned, starting out at 150 kilowatts, but now uh, sitting here 110 uh, kilowatts steady. Um, and then the nice thing is that this Polestar 2 has a 400 volt system. And what I'm seeing uh, in terms of the charging status is 416 volts going into the system at 262 amps. So uh, can charge this car up pretty quickly. And uh, Polestar has configured it uh, to charge to 90% to preserve uh, the life of the uh, of the battery in this EV. So we will go from where we are currently, uh, we started out 39% uh, at 50% now, and we'll charge it to 90% and be on our way. But we should be at about 260 miles of range, 270 miles of range once the vehicle is fully charged. So we're headed back to Austin, Texas uh, in the Polestar 2 and uh, pretty much open road at this point. On the highway, it's, it does very well at cruising speeds. Uh, passing is no problem, no shortage of power. Um, the real sort of issue is that the low end, uh, when just starting off with the Polestar 2, uh, is really sort of lacking in responsiveness. I'm not sure why that is, considering the dual motor setup and how much power uh, this vehicle has. So uh, roughly uh, 310 kilowatts from the motor, about 421 horsepower, 546 pound-feet of torque. Um, so that's really, you know, sort of an interesting kind of um, sort of performance situation considering that uh, this is a you know, fairly powerful vehicle. Um, so if I really push on the accelerator right now, the responsiveness is there. I went from 75 miles per hour uh, to 85 in uh, just a matter of seconds. Uh, you do have a bit of a pitch up while the car uh, is under acceleration, uh, which is quite common in, in some EVs. But uh, it's really the low end that's uh, the area that's lacking. But uh, overall, this is a great car to drive. It's, it's very quiet, uh, as you can hear. Uh, usually one of the big complaints with EVs is the fact that uh, you can hear the road noise because there is no motor, but uh, with, the com with the combination of the Michelin primacies uh, and just uh, the overall sort of uh, build quality of this vehicle, the insulation, uh, it's a very quiet and pleasant ride. Uh, you know, no wind noise coming off of the, the vehicle, you know, uh, sort of along the roof line. So that's quite nice. Um, it has this high stance, which is interesting because it feels like a car while driving it, it doesn't feel like a crossover. So I'm trying to understand what exactly is the Polestar 2? Is it a car or is it an SUV or crossover, I should say? And 
from driving it, it does not feel in any way, shape or form like a crossover. So it's really sort of interesting, uh, you know, sort of to guess what Polestar was thinking uh, when they made this vehicle. But I have to imagine that uh, they wanted to uh, make the vehicle a bit higher for those who prefer a higher seating position while driving. Um, in terms of the overall handling, uh, it, it doesn't have well, let me, let me not say what it doesn't have. What it does have is a very linear feel. So the car goes where you point the steering wheel, which is nice, very con confidence inspiring. And also uh, the car under speed, uh, you know, will maintain uh, its composure performance wise. It, it doesn't do anything that might, uh, you know, cause some discomfort or, or the driver to lose confidence. So that's very cool. Uh, it's not obviously uh, a BMW in terms of uh, the preciseness, but uh, for what this is, especially uh, a, a an EV with a big heavy battery in it, uh, the dual motor setup, uh, it, it is a, a very good performing vehicle. Um, not a chance to take it on sort of uh, curvy roads because obviously Texas, there's a uh, a, lot of, a lot of long, straight, fast roads here. But in the situations where I have um, been able to do some spirited driving in the Polestar, it's been quite nice. So uh, you've, you've had a chance to see sort of a little bit of what Texas looks like uh, from, from my point of view uh, in this Polestar. So that's really, you know, the best way to sum up uh, the handling and, and performance and overall just driving dynamics of the car. Uh, of the cars that I've driven, I really like this. Uh, I won't make any immediate comparisons. I think the Polestar has done well to give this car a very unique identity, uh, just overall. But the uh, the the handling and the driving dynamics, uh, I'm I'm quite satisfied with. Uh, as I mentioned, I'd like to see the car sit a little bit lower to the ground. Um, I think that certainly would tighten up the performance, but at the same time, perhaps uh, that might come at the expense of um, uh, fairly harsh ride quality. But this is the, the driving and handling of the Polestar 2, and uh, on our way uh, from Houston over to Austin, Texas, roughly 100 kilometers away, or 63 miles. Uh, and so that's the road trip in this Polestar 2, and, and everything's quite, quite good from this perspective. So I'm on day four with the Polestar 2, my fourth and final day. And one of the most important measures when reviewing an EV is its efficiency. So First, with the Polestar 2, I've driven it between Austin and Houston, as well as done mixed driving in Austin. So it's sort of a real world example of how the car will perform uh, under various driving conditions. So the conclusion uh, in terms of my four days with the Polestar 2 is it's pretty efficient uh, relative to other EVs that are on the market, including obviously the market leader, the Tesla Model 3. Now, several years ago when I had some time with the Chevy Bolt, that was roughly around uh, 3.1 kilowatt hours per 10 miles. So uh, this is a real example of, of how far the technology has come, but then also really a testament to the Polestar 2 and its own efficiency. Now, um, one of the complaints that I had was that the power seems to be lacking at the low end and that seems to be reflected in the overall efficiency of the vehicle. So if the Polestar 2 had a more aggressive uh, sort of acceleration profile, might that number sort of tick upwards to say 2.8 or even three. But overall, very pleased with the Polestar 2's efficiency. Um, and what that translates to with the 78 kilowatt hour battery is roughly 302 miles of range. But the key thing is that obviously we're not going to drive the car to empty and Polestar has projected a range of roughly 276 miles with the Polestar 2 in the dual motor setup. So the numbers really check out. Uh, and as I said, in my experience, the four days with the Polestar 2, I've been quite pleased with it, have never had any range anxiety issues and EV, EV charging in the Austin area as well as Houston uh, has been pretty uh, pretty decent. Uh, there have been some issues with, you know, sort of getting payments registered and such, but overall I've never had any real issues with getting the Polestar 2 charged in my time with it. So uh, once again, you know, quite pleased with the efficiency, but let me know what you think about the Polestar 2 in terms of its efficiency and whether there are any questions, but uh, this has to rank as one of the, the more efficient EVs on the market. Uh, again, you know, a true sort of uh, passenger car or maybe sort of crossover like vehicle, uh, but does well under mixed driving conditions. So if you're considering the Polestar 2, uh, you can have a, a pretty good degree of confidence that you'll be able to get to where you're going efficiently in this vehicle.
So what's the final word on the Polestar 2? Well, in a state that has its own unique brand of expression, individuality, and no-nonsense attitude, the Polestar 2 fits right in. It has its own unique identity, and it is no-nonsense. And in a place where SUVs and pickup trucks rule, the Polestar 2 will definitely find its place. I highly recommend it and is at the top of my list of all the EVs that I've tested and would be glad to have one. I'm actually really sad to part ways with it. So let me know what you think about the Polestar 2. Leave your comments in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. And also, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And for more content like this, be sure to let us know as well as support this channel. Thanks for watching this video and we look forward to bringing you the next one soon.